What up, Comic Heads? It is I, Comic Head 84, coming at you with my top 10 picks for New Comic Book Day, February 13th. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Coming in at number 10 is Mr. and Mrs. X, number 8. Now, this cover is just amazing to me. My boy Gambit, along with Spiral, who I love me some Spiral. It just gives me those 90s X-Men vibes. Children of the Atom, arcade game, Spiral action. Uh, so I've always liked that character. Great cover. And it's actually been a pretty good read, too. I'm a few issues behind. But I remember reading the first few uh, in this series. And... It's a pretty decent X title. Tyler and Rachel Dodson. It's like a husband and wife team writing for the husband and wife team of uh, Gambit and Rogue. So, cool cover that I think is going to draw me back in to the series. It's only a 10 issue run, so, uh, you know, it's coming to a close, is my understanding. But, yeah, that's my number 10 pick for this week. Number 9, Superman, number 8. The Rob Liefeld variant. So Rob Liefeld last week made my pass list. <laughs> and this week he's making my cop list. So this he's doing a, a Superman variant. And I, <laughs> I don't think it's the most spectacular Superman cover that I've ever seen. But there's something cool about it to me. I personally have never seen... Rob Liefeld draw Superman before um, so that kind of caught my eye and I even googled it too to see if he's drawn Superman if that's been published before and I was only able to find this one image and I don't think it was even published so I think this is first Rob Liefeld Superman which is kind of cool to me so it's almost like a, a tongue-in-cheek purchase uh, <laughs> in a way but I still think it's pretty cool. Uh, I get a kick out of a Rob Liefeld Superman cover. So that one's going to be on my pull list. Coming in at number nine. Number eight. ASM 15. Amazing Spider-Man 15. The Paulo Rivera variant. So this thing is clean. That is a beautiful cover image. Um, Paulo Rivera is one of those cover artists that I feel like he's just slept on. He doesn't get as much acclaim as he probably deserves because uh, there's some killer covers out there with him. He was just to show you a few, like this Venom one was one of my favorites. Um, and I'm going to pop up a few a few others just to show you that Paulo Rivera is, is a beast. This ASM cover, number 15. Is a, is a good pick so I think that one's going to end up in the in the pull list as well number 7 speaking of underrated cover artists Mark Brooks has a variant to Avengers No Road Home number 1 Scarlet Witch controlling uh, a robotic vision doll so a, just kind of an interesting cover you can't beat Mark Brooks art. So there's also an, an Adam Hughes uh, Scarlet Witch cover coming out for this series too. That's not bad as well, but the Mark Brooks one is where it's at. And I haven't read an Avengers title in a while, but I, I'm out of the loop. I really don't know what's going on in the Avengers world. So we'll see. Maybe this book will will be the the one to get me back on board. So. That's number seven. Uh, number six is Wonder Twins number one. Uh, this is from that Wonder comic series that is giving us Young Justice, Naomi. But this, the B cover to Wonder Twins number one really caught my eye. Um, this is uh, the variant from Dustin Wen. And Dustin Wen is going with like a synth wave aesthetic 
with this cover that I thought was really cool. And synth, this synth wave retro uh, aesthetic is something that's kind of been in, I don't know if you'd call it a meme, I guess, but it's it's been circulating around on the internet. And uh, the, the synth wave motif is kind of inspired by uh, OutRun, the old 80s racing game OutRun is always cited as the inspiration for uh, the synth wave or retro wave aesthetic and he's clearly using that in this Wonder Twins cover and I just thought that was a really cool touch for this issue so I'm gonna give it a shot it's written by Mark Russell who I haven't read much of his work but I, I was reading up on him and he seems to be getting a lot of praise. Apparently he had uh, a worthwhile run of the Flintstones. Uh, that I read a lot of praise uh, on, on Reddit about Flintstones by Mark Russell. Go figure. So anyway, that one's making the list. Uh, a very interesting B cover for Wonder Twins, number one. Number five. I mean, this one had to make the list. Uh, Wonder Woman, the, the art germ variant for Wonder Woman um, it's funny because this issue almost made my pass list to be honest because I've made a resolution for this year that I'm gonna try not to succumb to as many hot girl covers of books that I'm not reading um, so I almost put this in that category However, it's, it's a really sweet cover. Um, the horizontal aspect of it, we'll see what it looks like when it's in hand because I kind of feel like this image doesn't work that well with the horizontal. I think I would have rather seen uh, this piece on, on a standard cover, but it's fine. Like I said, I want to see what it looks like in hand. And I guess Wonder Woman's flying and I understand that like in some continuities or iterations Wonder Woman can fly but I prefer the Wonder Woman that that can't cannot fly and I think that's currently that's the mode of Wonder Woman that we're in uh, that she's not a flying hero so I don't know the flying thing threw me off a little bit but it's beautiful art germ artwork I'm looking forward to the fact that he's gonna be doing a run on Wonder Woman because he obviously does a very good job with her so Wonder Woman num uh, I don't know the number of the issue this Wonder Woman issue art germ variant uh, is gonna make the list now speaking of the pass list we're in the halfway mark of this uh, top 10 list which is gonna bring me to the books that are not getting picked up on this week and first one up is Image, The Warning, number four. I wanted to like this series. The first issue, it, it sucked me in enough that I wanted to see how it was going to play out. And it just really didn't. I feel like it's not going anywhere particularly interesting. Uh, again, I had high hopes for it because it's being written and illustrated by, by the same guy. So a lot of times when you have one creator who's doing the writing and the art, it's usually like a passion project for that particular person if they're controlling the whole operation. So normally uh, that can lead to, to good stuff, you know, when someone has no restrictions and it's just their one vision. But the warning just didn't play out that way. Uh, so I had been picking it up, but I picked up the first three issues. But as of issue four, I am dropping it. It's not going to be on the pickup list for me any longer. So uh, that's the warning number four. Uh, the one other book on my pass list is Fortnite. Fortnite is not making uh, my list. I'm going to pass on Fortnite. Um, Fortnite, as you can imagine, it appears to be some kind of uh, you know swipe on Fortnite where these these rifle guns are being powered through the anal cannon 
uh, and they're shooting farts out at people and, and all that good stuff. Uh, an interesting premise, I'm sure, but I'm going to pass on Fart Night. So those are my two passes for uh, February 13th. <laughs> Coming in at number four on the hot list, Batman Who Laughs, number three. Even though I'm not uh, completely on board yet with the story itself, these covers are just really awesome. And the design of Batman Who Laughs, it's just undeniable. It's a dope, sick design of this guy. He just looks really cool. There's, there's two variants that really caught my eye. Um, there's this one which uh, is probably the one to get, you know. But there's also a pretty sweet variant that I saw where he has Poison Ivy and Catwoman, like, on either side of him. And I don't know if I've seen a cover with this character, with these, these female characters with him yet. I don't think I've seen Batman Who Laughs with the female uh, compadres yet. So it was a cool look. Uh, I'm going to keep my eye out for that one as well. So, phew. next up is Marvel's Annotated. So, this is the classic Alex Ross story of the Marvels being, being reprinted, republished, however, annotated. So, I've only read one series that was annotated before, and that was the Watchmen book. I mean, I read that as, as a trade. So I'm not sure what it's going to look like in, in comic book form, but it was pretty interesting. Here's some, some pages from Watchmen Annotated where, you know, you're getting notes on, on the side of each panel, just giving you additional insight on what the creative team was thinking or just an analysis on the content that you see on the page. For a book like Watchmen, it was really interesting. Because that, that's a pretty layered story of Watchmen. And there's a lot going on there. So it's pretty cool to, to have that insight on the side of each page. So I'm, I imagine we're going to be in for uh, a similar treat in Marvels. In the Watchmen book, however, it was not Dave Gibbons or Alan Moore who was annotating on the side of those pages. It was like a third party person, a writer that was, you know, doing the notes. So I'll be curious to see if it is indeed Alex Ross that's that's noting it or not. So uh, we'll see. I forget the writer. Uh, uh, it escapes me. So I don't know if it's the writer or Alex Ross that is going to be doing the notes on this or not, but I'm, I think I'm going to pick it up. Next, speaking of Alex Ross... Savage Sword of Conan. Man, when you tell me that you're going to have Alex Ross Conan covers, I'm there. I'm on board. Count me in. Uh, I've been happy with the story of the main Conan series. Three issues in. I think three issues in. Two or three issues in. And, and I'm with it. I'm a little weary of, you know splitting up too many different Conan titles I don't know if the, I think there is going to be a third one aside from Savage Sword so we'll see I don't want to see them spread uh, Conan too thin but like I said you can't go wrong with, with Alex Ross doing doing some Conan covers so that one's going to be one to look out for which brings me to the number one pick and keep in mind this is just my personal curated list. And guess what? I'm biased. So it's Detective Comics 998. Um, even though I still think it's the best thing on the stands on that week of February 13th, I just personally love this current detective run. Batman is my guy. And the story is is just great. It's, it's building up to... Issue number 1000, the cat's pretty much out the bag already that issue 1000 is going to introduce the Arkham Knight. So we kind of know who the 
the villain is that's looming over the current stuff, the current you know storyline. But that's fine. It's all being executed really well. And this cover, the cover B, is just hot fire. So it's something I'm definitely going to pick up. And uh, something I suggest you pick up as well if you have not been reading Detective. So that's it. That's all I got, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, my picks and my thoughts, my yapping on these books. Uh, I enjoyed putting this together for you. And until next time, I'll catch you later. Peace.